Chris BBI here. I want to stop and say thanks. Thanks for tuning in and checking out whatever the video is about that's about ready to come up next. If you could take a minute and hit subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you've seen here, make sure to hit the like button. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Anyhow, guys, all that aside, let's get on with the show. Central Park in fall. How you toured your dress. Oh, what a mess. I confess. Dark a shame. Darling, dark a shame. Mm -hmm. Darling, dark a shame. Gentlemen, what we have here is a rare unicorn. It's not so rare that it's like, oh my god, rare. It's still pretty scoochum. Pretty scoochum frig, in my opinion. I've seen two of these in my day. One was owned by a guy here in town, and... Well, I'll just say this, he's kind of an idiot. And uh, he runs everything to 11. You know, he's the kind of guy that'll say, you, know, you hand him something that's worked fine for you for 20 years. And then he'll go and he'll hook it up. And he'll go, well, it blew up. And you're like, well, how'd that blow up? It's run fine for me for 20 years. And then he comes back and goes, well, I got a buddy of mine that told me that it should do 60 kajillion gigawatts. So we tried to push it there and it blew up. This thing's crap. I want my money back. Yeah. This is a neat, neat little box. They made these for just a couple years. Um, this has come out of when they were still building these things in California. And uh, it's the Palomar TX 5300. And it's in fairly decent shape. It was formerly a a white, uh, black faced. What's going on with my brand new scissors? Look at that. Man. I bet there's a screw underneath here I can tighten. Anywho, um, they only made these for a couple years, and um, they weren't a big seller, but they still were a good seller. This thing's been, this, this whole idea here has been around for a millennia or so, but um, take some time and put real labels on here for the next owner of this thing because it ain't me <clears throat> this thing coming to my my house a friend of uh, my house of creation here my uh, my friend purchased this and says man are these things worth any money and I said yeah they're worth a little bit of money I mean it's not like It's not like government fund money or anything like that. It, this is a decent little box. You can take this this amplifier here and you can run your ICOM 756, you know, 706 Mark II into it. And, uh, you know, you can run like your ICOM 7300 in the mobile in your car into it and get a reasonable amount of power out of it pretty consistently. I mean, the last time I checked, you got a couple couple hundred watts on sideband on 80 meters. Well, I don't, does this got any meters? Yeah, it's got 80, 40, 20, 10 and 15. Here's the face for it. You got four or 500 watts, especially in a mobile, man. You are working some serious contacts on sideband. Just saying. So we're going to get rid of... The horse malarkey wire that's in this thing. 
I've already upgraded the power wire coming out of the back. It had this is a 10 gauge that I'm taking out of it, but it had 12 gauge with like nine butt splices in it. Pretty friggin' hokey. Mohit. Mohit. Calling Mohit. Gotta get Mohit. Gotta get Mohit, man. Gotta get Mohit. Okay. The same wattage iron, they're just bigger. One's got a bigger tip. Tip. Once we're done, we're gonna run this thing through all its paces. It shows that it works everywhere. This is a no-tune, solid-state, multi-band, mid-power range, mobile amplifier. Might be easier just to take it out like this. So, good evening, everybody. Boy, yesterday was a wild day, man. My business phone rang all day. And the other company phone rang all day. It was wild. Shit, that thing is cold soldered on there. Sweet. So if I unsolder this... in here very carefully and solder this capacitor I can get in here and do work and not worry about over temping the switch because that switch is all plastic and not that it is that hard to find but I don't want to go and muck up something that's already working I don't know about you guys so move that capacitor out of the way That is the literal sense of a cold solder joint. Look at that. But if you were to look at that thing passively, you wouldn't even know that thing was broken. It's okay, I created this situation. I know how to fix it. Yesterday was a wild day. I was finally able to go into the house. I come, well, I got up at 6.30 in the morning and started talking on the company phone at about seven. I come out here and I tried to do that little Dave made yesterday for quite a few hours. I ended up getting finished up with it at about 7.30 last night. And then uh, as I edited the video, I sat out here and I did 40-something of my own personal business calls, this ant building thing. I was tired. So I don't like this design. Most solid-state boxes that you buy today the power wire, the power is uninterrupted on the device, and what the on-off switch does is it toggles the uh, positive lead for the relay on and off, where they want complete off in this situation. And we could modify it a whole awful lot, but that would detract from what it is, and that's not the point. We're wanting to just clean this up, make sure it's fully functional, give it the best prayer of survival we can and send it on down the road to the next guy who's going to love it and use it for well, let's see this thing was made in probably the 70s maybe the 80s probably the 80s so this thing was made 30 years ago so if it survived for 30 years with nobody expecting it to do anything more than what it was designed to do, and they're not trying to shoot out on channel 6 with it or some crazy shit, I'm hoping it'll go on to another home 
that'll love it as much as the previous owners have. But to find yourself a decent multi-band amplifier like this little guy here for under a thousand dollars in a modern production man forget about it just forget about it and that's the allure of this little guy It's not the most powerful thing in the world. No, hell, it's not even the most clean, the cleanest thing in the world. But it is class A, or class B, I mean. It is multi-band. And this is something you could probably throw in your car, run down the road, and nobody's gonna be the wiser. You're gonna have yourself a four or 500 watt mobile. Well, I take that back. Probably around 300. I'll say 300. 300 sounds like a safe number to me. I think I can get away with saying 300 and nobody's going to lose their minds. So, instead of the lid of tiny, tiny wire, even though we know that a small wire can carry a great deal of amperage over a very short distance, we're going to create ourselves a new wire. So the whole point is I don't want to get these tabs too hot on the switch. Because remember, they're only in a plastic housing, so it means I got I can heat the tab up like I'm going to do right now just to add some, some slobber to it. But then I want to stop. And I want to pull away because that heat's now wicking down that fin of the switch and it's going into the plastic body. And... Um, Remember, our goal here is to keep this thing as close to original, but give it just just a little bit of help that it needs in the right spots to upgrade it, to modernize it to today's standards. Oh, that's so pretty. I love soldering. I love soldering as much as I, well, I learned how to solder when I was about, I think about four or five years old. I'm not too sure. We have to go ask my daddy. He had this old, old janky ass blue Weller solder station. And he used to use it for small stuff around the house. And he had this room out in the garage called a radio room. So he could go drink, I think, when I was a kid, but I don't know. Anyhow, it, it had a bunch of old antique radios in it, and um, he'd be out there hanging out doing whatever he was doing, and he'd let me play with the soldering iron when I was a kid. When I got older, he helped me to learn how to weld and everything else that goes along with that, but that's what dads are supposed to do, right? Anyhow, um, he used to let me play around with that iron and just let me randomly flow solder onto this and that. and I got pretty good at it. Fairly good at it as a kid. Little did we know. Fast forward 35 years. We sit here today. It is 10.30 at night. Somebody's probably asking me the price on something right now. I had a guy say to me yesterday, that day before yesterday, we were doing, I was talking, I don't even remember what the post was on Facebook, and he comes up on the post and he goes, well, oh yeah, we were talking about some of the new tech that I'm getting ready to drop. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of new stuff I'm getting ready to do over here. And I'm excited about it. So I did a teaser post on Facebook about it. And he goes, well, every time I call him, he never answers the phone. So 
like, okay. And then I'm, I'm reading this post, right, that this guy is putting up. And then he goes on to say, my friend Tom, my good friend Tom, ba Mr. Baker Man, comes up and says, all you got to do is message him. And the guy goes, good luck with that every single time I talk to him. He doesn't want to respond. So I made a quick mental note of that. And went, all right. So I went and I looked at my messenger. And uh, sure enough, this guy decided to message me last night at 1030 in the evening for the very first time ever. And uh, at 1030 at night, he asked me a long question and it all revolved around him purchasing a brand new built amplifier, which I haven't taken an order for hardly anything and for like an ever and more, right? So I go back to the original post and I said, and this is on a Sunday night, by the way, at 1030 in the evening. I go back on the post and I said, I'm sorry, if I missed a call from you today, I'll return it tomorrow. It is Sunday. I am closed. I have normal hours from 9 to 5 Mountain Standard Time. Please feel free to contact me back then, and I'll get with you. <laughs> this guy comes back and he says to me, Oh, I'm sorry. I just thought you were some regular guy that just had a small Facebook page. Okay, yeah, I got a, I got a small Facebook page, and this is true. It's not an unfactual statement. Then he follows the statement up with, in the next sentence, you know, I didn't think you were a real business or anything. <laughs> All you do is start laughing. The wife's like, what? And I said, I guess I'm not a real business or something. <laughs> she goes, what? Oh, my God. So, needless to say, I go and I look at my call logs. I did miss a call from the guy apparently three months ago when he called me on a Saturday evening at 11.54 in the evening, my time. And where he's at in the country, that's 2.54 in the morning. Needless to say, I really wanted to say some nasty stuff back to him, but I don't roll like that. I just simply deleted the comment and then deleted him because, you know, in my mind, I'm like, wow. Or for a minute, I thought you were a real customer. Guess not. The moral of the story is, is that we're all human. We're all trying to do the best that we can with the time that we've been allotted while we're here on God's green jolly earth. And, uh, yeah, if you're trying to ask a guy to do something for you, it's probably best that you don't start out the conversation one, saying he's delinquent and being able to return your phone calls. And then two, going on to belittle his business. And three, making false statements. And then when we get down to the meat of the, the meat of the skin, the meat of the foreskin, we discover that you're one of those guys that it calls people at 3.30 in the morning and expect them to answer the phone. Uh, guys, I got to have a life too. I got to live a little bit. It's just the way it is. It's the way it's going to be. Period. So I'm sorry if I missed your phone call at 10.30, 11, 12, 1, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, yeah. slack. We're going to hook this over. We're going to give ourselves a mechanical connection under the hard wire. Now really, Palomar Engineer, it, would it kill you guys to just make it so I could switch the power of the relays on and off? Shit. Okay, so now we got a mechanical connection. Let's make it an electrical connection now. Something that can flex and move and not create a cold solder joint here.
I didn't think you had a real business. I thought you were just some dude with a, with a Facebook page. I'm a dude with a Facebook page. And a Twitter account. And a Snapchat account. And an Instagram account. Let's stick this sucker back down where it was at. So, the second one of these that i seen... come along when I started this crazy 24-7 train. And it was uh, owned by number two in the Evergreen. And we changed all the transistors out inside this thing. We used Toshiba's in it. And that thing made a scoochum amount of power. Most impressive amount of power. Um, didn't play with any of the tuning all that much. Um, changed out the induction inside the transformer so it would be a little bit more resonant to the component. And uh, there are a couple little arco variables that are in this thing that you can make some input and output capacitance adjustments to for the primary tuning of the device. So we align those for the component's sake. And I believe he's still running that, and he's got it mounted up in his trunk with his ICOM, I do believe. The 706 Mark II. I got a really big project sitting over here for number two. But, uh, I got no funds. I got a 4CX5000 sitting over here I need to finish for that, that nice, kind gentleman, my friend. But we need to get some funds going together for that. Okay. Like that. Very clean. Not dirty, nasty work. All right. Let's get to the business of putting the face back on it. Give me a second. Okay. So here's our faceplate for this little guy. There is a scuff mark down the corner. This edge right here. Um... It is black and blue underneath it, but somebody at the factory put this on. This is not... It came from the factory that way. I know this because I very carefully um, warmed up that face so that the epoxy would become a little bit less uh, adhered. And very carefully slid that up because I wanted to see what was going on underneath it. Um, over here and I took up this side of the, the face and the black that's underneath here I think uh, no the white the exposed whites way better off I think we're gonna be in a better position with this so I wanted to clean the face really good Like I said, this thing is going to be for sale here in the not too distant future. And what I mean by that is probably by the end of this video. There's a ham guy out there that knows exactly what this is, exactly what it's capable of doing, and was like, oh, I've been looking for one of those. Now, I haven't done the normal, usual things that I do. I go look it up on eBay and see what the availability of it is and have not been messing with that. I took this in about two weeks ago and started dinking with it on a Sunday, my time, on a Sunday. And uh, I thought, well shoot, I better get this all back together before I start losing all the little pieces that make it original. You know. So, I need my needle nose. <laughs> there they are.
Hmm. Mr. LED. Come on now. Play with the rest of the teammates. Come on, the rest of the LEDs didn't mean it when they said you were dim-witted. You're the same light emitting diode as everything else in this, this freaking thing. There we go. So there's two little snap, there's a snap collar that most places and people just, they do away with. But there's an actual physical retention collar that goes on the back side of these LEDs. Just deathly afraid I'm going to snap a leg off one of these LEDs and it's going to be over. Because you know if I go and i got to replace one of these LEDs, it's not going to be the same pitch red or it's not going to be the same luminosity or anything. It's going to miss it. Your buddy was a dim-witted LED. You, sir, are just stupid. There we go. Maybe it's the installer of the LED. Okay, last LED. Don't get cocky, you're at the end of the run, Luke. Use the force, okay. There we go. In the heat sink, yes. This was definitely owned by a non smoker, by the way. Cores if it had a, a frequency adjustable band filter on it, like a low pass, high pass notch filter, like what the uh, Henry SS 750 and uh, the Henry 900s have. I can't remember the one it was I did for uh, Big Rig Radio. It was uh, it was called a Morgan. Neat, neat box four times this size, had Toshiba's in it, it had 10 of them in there, it was designed to have like any 10 meter or HF, or yeah, HF radio hit it, huge heat sink, freaking four fans on it, big old freaking adjustable frequency notches on it so you don't have to worry about any out of band deviation with it, beautiful freaking amp. Can't remember the manufacturer's name of that thing. It's driving me nuts. Here, hold on, hold on. We'll call him. He's got like a mind like a friggin' like an elephant. Shit's all starting to run together for me. Hey, Stinky Cheese, you're on video. Oh. Hey, what was, what was that big multi-band amp that you picked up in Puyallup a couple years ago that I, I went through and we sold in the back of that guy's custom car with the ferret capacitors and all that stuff? Oh, the MLA-1000 Metron. Thank you. I've been stumbling. I've been sitting here talking about it. That's all I needed. I'll call you later. All right, bud. All right, bud. Bye-bye. All right, bud. Metron was an amazing amplifier. 
It's one of them ones where it comes through here and you're looking at it going, man, I wish I could have that for myself. And then I go, no, 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 I don't need that. Okay. Let's, uh... Let's see how well this works. I haven't tested this yet. I have no idea what it's going to do. So let me get the workbench all set up and get the radio out and everything, and we'll cut right back to this. Give me just a second. Okay, away we go. Um, shoot. One other thing that we got to look at. So, we are going to give you the full gambit, man. So everybody's going to see that name Palomar and they're going to be like, Oh my god. It's a CB amplifier. This is not that. Okay, so... This is our voltage. Amplifier band position switch positions. This is our reflect. This is a 50 watt slug. 2 through 30 megahertz. ICOM 7300. Over here we got our oscilloscope. Over here we got our spec an. Our spec analyzer is set from 30 megahertz all the way down to zero at the bottom. Over here we have a thousand watt slug and peak. Right here's a thousand watt slug and average. It's our five watt slug and reverse back from the bird 10,000 watt dummy load. Okay, just to test this guy. <laughs> Um, we're on 12.5 volts. Radio is producing on 12.5 volts as well. We're going to turn the amplifier off. We're going to start out on uh, 10 meters. And as you can see, we got a nice, a nice little signal reference here. And you can, if you look over here, you can see that needle's wigging up to about 90. Our pass through tune stupid low maybe about a watt so let's go ahead and turn this on remember we're on 12 volts it'd be just like if you're running your car just like you're running a car and you shut your car off Hello. so pull into 11.5 we've got about two watts worth of reflect here and over here Hello. I think I got a dirty fuse holder, you guys. Pretty sure. Hold on a second. Fuse been replaced. Um, it's actually back in the amplifier now. It was just dirty, so I went in there and cleaned it out a little bit and blew it out with some contact cleaner. We're good to go. If we have any other problem with it, I'm going to pull the fuse holder completely out and I'm going to replace it with a brand new one. So, pedal. We're seeing. About 280 watts running down 11 volts here, though, right? So now let's pretend the car's on for a minute. So let that soak up in the batteries for a minute. Nice solid 14 volts. Pulling 75, 80 amps. But we're up to 400 watts of power. Bring on that third supply. About 400, 400 watts. And I want you to look at the spectrum analyzer over here. Not splattering all over the place. Help if I turn on the sideband switch, right? You guys would think, geez, after all these videos, you think you'd have some practice. Hello, audio, one, two, one, two, one, two. A couple little small spikes, but they're all 50, 60 dBs down from principle. Well within acceptable standards. Ain't nobody going to cry about it. Okay. Let's go to 20 meters. Once again, shut off the amplifier. Hello. Right at 100 watts from the radio. Hello. Perfectly idyllically clean signal coming out of the out of the radio. Hello. 
I'll just turn the amplifier on. Hello, audio. Same 380 watts worth of power. Hello, about three watts worth of reflect and 100 bird average watts. Click it over to 40 meters. Let's go to 40. Now we're going to start seeing this thing produce more and more power the lower we go in frequency because that's where the thing is set up for, not 10 meters. It's actually designed to run down low. Hello. We're seeing 150 average, 380 peak. Hello. With the same 100 watts worth of drive. Let's go to 80 meters. I'll show you drive first. Hello. 100 watts. Turning amplifier on. Hello. About 425 peak watts. So, a little close to about a half K. I have just a tiny little four pill. This thing is uh, rated to do 350 watts, 3 megahertz through 30 megahertz. Now, there's a whole bunch of modifications we can do to the inside of this thing. We can change out the transistors. It's got four um, 60 watt average per devices in it. Okay. So we can go and we can put 120 watt transistors in there and get a little bit more power out of it. But I think that kind of defeats the point. It really does. This is exactly what it is. A beautiful, fairly inexpensive, multi-band, mobile, 450 watt amplifier. Just saying. Like I said, guys, um, I think we're going to ask about 400 for this. Um, oh, wait a minute. No, we need to get 450 out of this is what we need to do. So, if anybody out there is interested in this thing, call me. First one with cash gets the booby prize. And just so we got it covered, here's the tin. There are exactly five holes in the lid. The tin is very clean. There is no rust. Clean heat sink. Clean on the inside, non-smoking. Give me a call if you're interested. Gentlemen, I gotta go. Appreciate y'all tuning in to check it out and see what's going on. A lot of information, a lot of different meters to look at in this thing. I'm sure you guys are gonna have to rewind it and play it back a couple times. Look at it three or four times and be like, wait a minute, what, what? Wait a minute, what, what, what? It is what it is. I'll see you guys. Bye. 80 meters with 100 watts worth of drive. Oh, on sideband, 400 watts. 40 meters with 100 watts of drive. Hello. -oh. 20 meters with 100 watts of drive. Hello. -oh. And then course 10 through 15 meters. So first we're going to do 15 meters. Hello. Now we're going to do 10 meters. You guys have a good night. Call this number if you're interested. Or text it. I'll get you squared away. Thanks, guys. The TX5300-5300. We'll see you. Bye-bye.